Greece, there's no rent. We don't pay rent there. So we're uh-huh. like, <laughs> yeah. I'm we moving to rent. Greece. I don't, we don't pay school fees. <laughs> Damn. We don't pay so school everything, fees. M- most of so, your bills are sorted. Yeah. Uh-huh. We just pay like general bills. So we're like, you know what? This, this makes more sense. Let's go there, figure out, and we can create well there. Mm-hmm. We don't have to stop creating. Mm-hmm. So we moved um, just to take a break uh, because things weren't working at the time. What's up, guys, and welcome to the Art Saints Show. My name is Chepto Ekboyo, and today we have one of the leading ladies in the film industry in Kenya. Her name is Liz Njaga. She's an actress, a director, and a producer. Welcome to the show, Mama. Thank you. Karibu. <laughs> eh, you, know, you ditched us. I don't know if I ditched. I mean, I I did what's best for my kids, and I'm sorry if it, if Kenya feels like I sort of disappeared. But you know, it was it's definitely better for them to be in Greece. Uh huh. So how many times do you come and 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 go back? To be honest, since we've uh, since I left, this is my second time coming. But because uh, of COVID, it sort of just messed up all our plans to travel. We're actually planning on traveling in 2020, yeah. and then you know, COVID happened. So then now we had to yeah uh, delay. Because, you know, travel restrictions and everything. But now we've come as soon as we could. Okay. Karibu sana. Asante. Now, let's talk acting. Mm-hmm. A lot of people knew you from Makutano Junction. This is after you've done numerous stage performances. Would you say that is your big break? Or there was another show before that that guys kind of knew you? Well, Makutano Junction was definitely my big break. And in terms of uh, for the Kenyan audience, because that's... That was my, it wasn't really my first show on TV, but it was my first um, show that a lot of people were watching, you know, and a lot of people loved because the other show that I did was, uh, didn't get as much uh, of an audience as Makutano did. Uh huh. Which one was that? It was, um, what was that thing called? All Girls Together. I think it was on Metro TV a long ah. time ago. Like a really long time. They did mm-hmm. a reboot of it with uh, different actresses, but um, the original was like many years ago, you know, mm-hmm. way before Makutano. Okay. Yeah. And then I saw online Apple, you've posted photos with p- the late Papa. Mm. And that star studded cast of Makutana. Because I remember Makutana was a big deal. I auditioned for it several times. Did but you? I never got to. <laughs> okay, I mean, maybe, maybe there just wasn't a part that was suitable for you. Because, you yeah. know, auditioning is a different thing. It's, it doesn't mean that they don't like you. It just means that maybe there wasn't a character suitable for you. Yeah. Uh huh. Now, then after that, shortly after that, you landed Tinsel, a big Mnet West African production. Uh, tell us how you got it. Was it a normal audition? Did you get like a phone call? Because then I remember it's not something, it wasn't easy to just interact with guys within within the continent. A cook in a WhatsApp yeah. that you can Zoom, yeah. do an audition, send <laughs> yeah. like a show reel. Yeah. How did you get that role? Well, I auditioned actually. I mean, I saw uh, a post on Facebook. I think somebody posted about auditions that you know they're happening for. I don't think they even said the show. Um, or at the time, I didn't know the show. So mm-hmm. even if they said it, it didn't really, you know, um, I didn't really. It didn't strike me as okay. That's Tinsel. That's a big show. Mm-hmm. So I saw the I saw the post on Facebook, and then I also mm-hmm. posted it because I was like, oh, you know, if I don't get it, I love you know what I'm friends to get it. So yeah. I posted it on my Facebook profile as well, and I was like, you guys audition, and I sent it to like a few of my friends as well, mm-hmm. and then I went for the audition, and I remember mm-hmm. walking in, um, and they allowed me to hold the script in my hand mm-hmm. because a lot of times when you're auditioning and you've just learned the lines and it's hard to remember them, you know, I. Found it easier to sort of so you don't have to think about the lines while you're auditioning you to have the script in your hand and yeah you just audition. for referral yeah, exactly mm-hmm. so i like the auditions that let me have my script in my hand because you know it just it takes out the anxiety of oh i forgot that line i have to remember the line so i walked in and i had the script in my hand and i and i read the part you know and i, and I left and uh and i was like okay uh then they called me back and i was like so the auditions were in nairobi yes Yes, ah. They came here to audition because they. Um, I later found out that they auditioned in Ghana as well. So they're ju- generally looking for a non-Nigerian, you know, mm-hmm. um, like any uh, from Ghana or Nairobi, East Africa. you know. Yeah. Uh-huh. So um, then they called me for, and funny story, you know, they actually <laughs> called me. I got the notice that I was uh, shortlisted mm-hmm. and needed to travel to Nigeria when I was in South Africa for the shortlist for Big Brother. 
Can you imagine? Oh, no. So, I was shortlisted. Oh, oh, Nobody, oh, oh, very few people oh, oh. know this, but I was actually shortlisted for Big Brother, yeah. With all um, this year in the, mid- in the media, I didn't know. You know? Which, which year of Big, of it was Big the, Brother was It was the one this? that Sheila got. Oh, Sheila Kwamboka. Kwamboka. Yeah. It's funny. I've actually been shortlisted for two Big Brothers. And um. Um, <laughs> so the first one was Sheila Kwamboka, the Sheila Kwamboka one. Um, mm-hmm. And it was me and her. Mm-hmm. And then the second one was, um, I think, the one with Millicent. Actually, oh, so it was Millicent Mugadi. Yes. Yeah. So it was the Millicent one that now Tensor called me. So it was this uh, audition. And actually, the funny thing about Big Brother was they called me and said, you have to come and audition. You know, so I think mm-hmm. at that point, they were like, okay, we're going to, um, you know, take the sort of were hoping to take me because, you know, they knew I was interested in being in it. Mm-hmm. So I went for the second audition. I was, I was in South Africa. Mm-hmm. And then they called me at the airport and they're like, oh, you know, we shortlisted you for Tensor and you need to come. No, actually, wait, wait. No, they called me to tell me I got the part because I'd auditioned before. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah you had yeah, auditioned yeah. in yeah. So they called me to tell me I got the part. Mm-hmm. And the funny thing, the same people deciding for Big Brother were the same people deciding for Tinsel. Oh, so no. I think they knew already. They were like, yeah, this one, we picked her last night. So what is she doing here? You know, but I hadn't been told. So, <laughs> so it was, That's was so really, interesting. Yeah, it was really mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. And then w- what made you decide to audition for Big Brother? Since you, you've been picked twice on two different years, why did you really want to go for Big Brother? Well, Big Brother is a big platform. And I was mm-hmm. like, you know, it would be fun to be... Uh, on that show, like to be locked up in a house for I don't know how many months it was, but it would have been fun like to do three that. months. Yeah, <laughs> so just, I love doing different things. I love. I think one of the things I love doing is I love auditioning as well. Just to you know, um, whatever opportunity because I believe in putting my eggs in many baskets. So whatever mm-hmm. opportunity comes, uh, based on all the auditions I've done, you know, I go for them. So yeah, I would really have gone for Big Brother. Honestly, wow, that's interesting. <laughs> Couldn't have wait to watch because I remember in in around two thousand and six to twenty thirteen, mm-hmm. I was a loyal Big Brother fan. Yeah, because <laughs> then it was Big Brother Africa, yeah. and then I would start uh, cheering the Kenyans. Yeah. Then all, when all Kenyans are evicted, I go out to East Africa. Yeah, yeah, right. And now it's like. So who who's the hottest? Yeah. Who's the flyest <laughs> in this know. house? <laughs> that's, that's that's now the person I should I, I would have voted for. Yeah. Wow, that is interesting. I never knew about that. Then you get to Nigeria. When when Tinsel accepted you, d- did they pay for everything when you went to Nigeria? And how long did you stay there? How was your schedule working with in Nollywood? Well, they paid for everything. They paid for accommodation. They paid for... Actually, uh, the way Tinsel works, they had accommodation for a lot of the cast Mm -hmm. because Nigeria is... uh, Lagos is quite big. So if you want your cast to be there on time, Mm -hmm. the best thing to do is put them up in a a location. So we had... Like, uh, we're living in a a block of apartments, you know? So we're all living together. Like, you know, like... uh, Not everybody, but like the ones that wanted to live there. Uh So um, I was there for about a year and a half. uh, I think slightly more than a year. And, um, yeah, they paid, they used to give me per diems, they used to give me um, my salary, of course, you know. Uh, so, yeah, it, it was a very interesting experience. <laughs> okay. And and when I looked at Tinsel, it had so much star-studded casts. Like, these were the Nollywood who's and who's. Akunati, upcoming, struggling. <laughs> <laughs> How was it working with those actors? It was actually very interesting because I saw their work ethic. Like a lot of them would just get on set and do the job, you know, and do the work. You know, no matter what was happening um, in their lives or no matter what was happening, you know, around them, they would literally just go on set and it would just be about the work. And I really, really admired that. I mean, and then the mm-hmm. fact that we're doing it every day. Mm-hmm. You know, I think one of the things that Tinsel did for me was because I was acting every single day. Is it Honestly, I think it improved. Uh, my acting ability because you yeah. know the more you do something the more you the better you become yeah so i think honestly tinsel really helped me grow um and working with the, the stars was actually cool because i remember whenever we went out because mm-hmm. in the beginning um what was showing on free to air tv was like mm-hmm. the older episodes so by the time i went there my scenes were only running on you know like mnet right and not yeah. everybody has mnet yeah not everybody has so the dstv full package the premium bouquets yes, exactly mm-hmm. so People didn't know me, but they knew everybody else, you know. So I would, uh, just to hang out with the celebs and be in a, in a club yeah. and everyone's like, oh, there's a t- that's Tinsel, you know. So just to see the impact, because Nigerians love yeah. that show. They love they're so it. loyal to their guys. So loyal. And you know, for the longest time, they thought I was Nigerian. Um, <laughs> it's only until I got married that then uh-huh. the blogs were like, oh, yeah, uh, Kenyan Tinsel star, you know, Elizabeth Jaga. So then they realized, ah, this girl is not Nigerian. Not Nigerian. But you yeah. know you can pass for a good Nigerian. <laughs> Well, 
actually Kenyan Nigerian you yeah. can pass so yeah. well yeah, yeah. yeah. you can masquerade you, know? cool, <laughs> you and your hubby mm-hmm. produced House of Lungula and Fundamentals which was purely about the sex lives of Kenyans yes. why was that an important story for you guys to tell To be honest, it wasn't even about the story. It was just about, you know, we see how popular bedroom farces are uh, on stage. Mm-hmm. And we're like, how do we recreate that for TV? You know, how do we recreate that on film? Mm-hmm. So that was how um House of Lungula started. We just wanted to do a bedroom farce, you know? Mm-hmm. And um because we saw how Kenyans loved going to the theater and watching uh, all these hard strings performances were always sold out. You sold know? out. Yeah. And, so, and sometimes they will do they will re what's it called extra shows, yeah you know extended extra shows, you know yes. and so we're like eh, we should do the same thing for film because we hadn't really seen anything mm-hmm. um like that on film mm-hmm. um especially on like mainstream uh film like in the cinema there wasn't anything yeah. like that mm-hmm. so we thought yeah let's do it and that's how actually House of Lungla and Fundamentals were born as a director and a producer mm-hmm. what do you look for when you're choosing your star cast your main characters what do you look for that's an interesting question because you have to think in terms of is this person um you want to pick someone likable you know mm-hmm. you know a, apart from talent because talent is obviously important and you want to yeah. pick somebody who um is good at what they do but then also you want to pick somebody who's likable because you're going to be spending hours with them on set yeah you know yeah. and mm-hmm. you want to have somebody who you can get along with you know um because after a while yeah if the per- and, and somebody i think who also has um who's disciplined mm-hmm. you know who cuz if you have stories that oh this person doesn't show up on set on time or this person is had to you know is had to with, work with, with then you're like okay you think a bit uh, like you're longer. talented but yeah. how how are you going to work around exactly. this exactly so for us mm-hmm. the talent is important but then also we like we like using uh we like discovering new talent as well mm-hmm. and not just in front of the camera but also behind mm-hmm. uh so a lot of times we work with a lot of interns and then mm-hmm. you know we end up um putting them in uh, future productions uh mm-hmm. hiring them or mm-hmm. they go on to do greater things in the industry mm-hmm. so yeah <laughs> good attitude matters yes it does <laughs> what How the toughest aspect of making a film in Kenya? Cuz I remember a few years back it was oh my god the taxes are there for the equipments we can't shoot uh when when an international company comes to Kenya it, it's just ridiculous amount of money hence everyone was going to South Africa but you as a producer what are the toughest aspects of shooting currently in Kenya? I'd say um there's a few challenges but I think one of the ones is just finding locations to shoot you know um getting people to agree to use your locations and then um i mean to lose use their locations mm-hmm. um like when you need a hotel or when you need um like different apartments mm-hmm. you know like it's a lot of people whenever they see a camera they get scared mm-hmm. you know they're like oh i don't want to be on camera but they don't mm-hmm. understand that for film you have to get um permission from everybody you put like everybody that shows up on screen yes. like even if they are just walking across you have to get permission from them so yes. we're not just going to take unless it's a reality show then i think they still have to do the same thing but yeah. they can blur the faces yes but for uh cinema um for um uh written you know like uh for scripted shows Yes. You actually have to have permission from everybody because you're not going to start blurring people's faces in a script no, show, you know. So, <laughs> you're not going to do that. Someone like so, a background. Yeah. Even even people in the background, you have to get like release forms. They have to yes. give you permission to use the images. Mm-hmm. Even if it's their back, you know what I mean? You have yeah. to get permission. So, um it, a lot of Kenyans don't understand this. So they think that if they see a camera, you're going to put them on screen. They're going to see themselves, you yeah. know, featuring And sometimes them. it's totally different angle yeah. than they're not even seen exactly and they're like do not don't don't shoot me you're like yeah. but you're not even there yeah i'm yeah. shooting something like else the, cam- the camera is focused <laughs> on something <laughs> else and they're here and they think oh i'm in the shot no you're not I'm in the, the shot. shot we're just shooting here mm-hmm. you know so that's the thing i think just people understanding that that's that's one of the biggest challenges just um going to shoot uh like in a public place and everybody's just standing around watching while you're shooting you know it's like it's a bit oh tough. yeah <laughs> That, that reminds me of the of the anchors who go through this especially when they shoot in Ocha and you're there doing your pieces to camera and guys in the back 
<laughs> I know. <laughs> or doing something <laughs> funny in the background. Yeah, you know? like, like two on a card. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but for news, it kind of works because yeah. you're supposed to be right there where mm-hmm. the action is, you know, where everybody is. So, it's, But mm-hmm. imagine that you're doing a film and you have to cut around it. If somebody's there like waving or doing something, you know, you have to. Yeah, it's going to be challenging, especially when you're editing. Yeah. How do you choose a script that you're going to direct? To be honest, I'm pretty new in directing. So mm-hmm. I think uh, I've pretty much just directed, I think, one um, one film so far. And I have a few more that we're working on. But I think if, if the project speaks to me, you know, okay. like if I see that I can relate to the people mm-hmm. in the, the, if the characters are real. And that's the thing, that's one thing that um, Alex and I are really trying, whenever we write scripts, we're mm-hmm. like, we want the characters to be as real as possible. We want people to see themselves in these characters. You know, we don't want, we want to have like um, full-sided, I don't know how to say it, like um, characters that are... Uh, Relatable to the normal living. Yeah, you know, and, being. and that are full of depth and, you know, they're good and bad at the same time, not just good, not just bad, you know. So I think, yeah, for me, if, if I relate to the characters, then yes, I'd, I'd love to direct it. And also, if I see that it's something that is close to my heart, mm-hmm. um, then yes, definitely. That's you, how I pick. You, does money matter? Um, money, of course, yes. I mean, directing is... Uh, <laughs> it's in, a hard job. It's a freaking... <laughs> it's intense. You mm-hmm. literally wake up dreaming about the shots you're going to do and about, you know, what... You, d- d- directing is intense. It's. I think acting is a lot... I wouldn't say easier, but it's a different um, thing because... You're, you just have to like learn your lines and like internalize the character. But as a director, mm-hmm. you have to you, you have to think of everything. I mean, you have a team, but yeah. you still have a say in like you know how the uh, the set looks. How you know you're in charge of pretty much a lot. Three sixty of everything yes. that is gonna work right. Yes, it's the director yes. who did the job. Before you left, you were pretty much one of the top filmmakers in the country. <laughs> we went. Now you're back. Where do you see this? film industry going in the next three years it's actually i see great things Mm -hmm. because if you look at what's happening now in africa and i say africa because a lot of times um when you think of africa people think of uh, especially for film people the first country people think of is nigeria then south africa then kenya you know kenya actually features in um when you think of african film and if you look at now there's such an interest in african Mm -hmm. productions you know like uh, a lot of uh, nigerian um filmmakers have signed deals with amazon Mm -hmm. you know netflix like Mm -hmm. first look deals and it's like that's awesome even uh we have like a lot of product netflix is interested in investing in african content and they're focusing on south africa nigeria and kenya you know so just the fact that um there's it means there's going to be more investment coming into the film industry and so there's going to be better uh productions being put out you know um all these um um investors are actually interested in us so that's that's good i i think in three years huh, kenya's gonna we're, we're, be, we're gonna be money making yes like an artist industry. is gonna yeah an, an artist, artist is gonna, is be, gonna be to just leave. do film and you live off film and not have mm-hmm. to do production or directing or you know because this or is have how, a main job then this becomes yeah, like a side exactly, job you know so just be able to just um live and work live and die doing um you know, acting or, you know, doing whatever you want in the industry is, is ama- would be amazing. And I, I see that happening. Yeah. I see that happening. Mm-hmm. Also, the productions are booming right now. Yeah. And when you see the quality level of what was before and now, you're like, wow. It's really going improved. Far. Yes. Yeah. And also the new talent pool. Mm. You're like, wow, where were you guys? <laughs> you mean all of you were back in school when <laughs> we needed actors. Yeah. <laughs> but I think also people going through... People deciding, mm-hmm. I'm going to focus on what I love uh, and the talent is why the industry is really opening up. Even just, nece- not necessarily the big screen, mm-hmm. but YouTube, mm-hmm. when you look at the content there, sure. you're like, when I put a little bit of production in this, yeah. this is going to be dope. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Which Kenyan actor would you say is an all-time best actor? That's a hard question. <laughs> or actors, would you, know, you say, is an old time? That's, you know, only the guys you've worked with. So you can only <laughs> analyze from there. From that So that other guys are like, <gasps> how dare she say whoever. Interesting. I mean, that's, 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 I think, I think I'll be biased because I'll possibly just be picking my friends. You know <laughs> what I mean? So it's like, I think, you know, it's hard. It's kind of hard to pick 
a best actor or actress because mm-hmm. it's very subjective. You know, it's mm-hmm. like somebody could be really awesome in one part, but mm-hmm. you know, not that good in another. You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. it's it's hard to pick. Um, but I've I've worked with some amazing some amazing actors out there. Like, and you just look at them and you're just like, I mean, like uh, Sarah. Sarah, is, Sarah Hassan's awesome. Yeah. I mean, Mumbi Minor. So I'm literally just, you know, working with them. And you're just sitting there and you're just like, wow, this is cool. Like, mm-hmm. you know, these guys are really good. Like, mm-hmm. so it's, it's, um, it's hard to pick. <laughs> and like I said, I'm going to be biased because I'm going to pick my friends. Like, I'm just, I'm just, okay, we're going to be just safe. <laughs> I'm just saying that. I'm going to pick my friends. <laughs> Name three countries yeah. you would like to shoot your movie mm-hmm. and why. Apart from Kenya, which other ca- three countries would you really like to shoot a movie? Seychelles. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. It's like just so, um, I, I, you know, there's just so, such good scenery, mm-hmm. you know. And I would like to say Thessaloniki, but we've already done that, so it's fine. Let me not say Thessaloniki. Uh, Brazil as well. I think the, the energy of the people is just so vibrant. Like, you know, like they're just... They're so welcoming. I was right? watching a documentary, yeah. I'm like... You guys are like Africans. Yeah, they, I mean, they are. <laughs> they are. They it, are. It has yeah. the most black people. Yeah. But still, they're so warm. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And just so like full of energy and vibrant. And so I'd love to shoot in Brazil. Um, so those are two seashells, Brazil. <laughs> mm-hmm. And where else? Um, as a producer or as an, as an actor? I mean... As a producer. As a producer. Okay. Um, I mean, the States. Because, you know, anything sh- shot in the States travels. So that would oh. be, like, you know, a dream to shoot something there. Because people, for some reason, because Hollywood has uh, brainwashed us into yes. thinking that, you know, Hollywood content is, <laughs> is you know, the, the top content. Is exactly. I mean, <laughs> it is, but there's still. So I would love to shoot in, um, yeah, in, in Hollywood. In, in Hollywood. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what would you consider your greatest achievement to date? I'd say being on Tinsel. Mm-hmm. You know, I think... Every part of my career, um, like everything was a stepping stone. Okay. But what Tinsel did for me was put me um, in the hearts and minds of Africans and yeah. Africans in the diaspora. So not just because Tinsel is watched um, around the world. Yeah. I hear it's translated in some, other, in some European countries. So um, I think Tinsel would be my greatest achievement. Um, and... I mean, I, I don't take like I don't take lightly the fact that I was on Tinsel. Like, it was such a big platform, mm-hmm. and you know, it, it was such an amazing opportunity, and I really loved it. And and you know, I forgot to say at the beginning of the thing, eh, it was mm-hmm. actually Lux that people know me from. Ah, la- the oh, Lux yeah. advert was even before yes. Maxana Junction, and Lux actually got me Maxana Junction. Mm. Yeah, because you know they saw me on Lux and were like, "Yeah, she has come to audition." So, <laughs> so basically, it was Lux. Lux was my my first big break um, on TV. But you see, it's an ad, so and it was playing all the time. Like they yeah. were really playing it all the time. Um, but there's a story around Lux though that you know they I should tell, us. tell you Cause because I remember <laughs> getting adverts. Then it was really hard bugging such a an advert for uh, this premium soap that everyone was like, "Leaves the Lux." <laughs> They actually wanted a lighter skin girl. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but yeah, yeah a la- it was actually the first time there was a dark skin girl on TV. Mm. Lux was the first time. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you know, I remember going on set. I mean, they picked me because of uh, I'm I. It's it's a bit. <laughs> my my sister was in the room because my sister worked for Unilever. Okay. At the time that, um, uh, they were shooting you know, the Lux commercial. Mm-hmm. She didn't tell them. She was my sister, though. And I remember when I first auditioned for, I mean, when, when I was called to audition for mm-hmm. Lux, so I asked my sister, I was like, okay, what are they looking for? She's like, well, they're not looking for you. Don't come. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> She's like, and I said, okay, I'm not going to come. So I said, ouch. Because at that time, I was working at Phoenix, right? Uh-huh. And um, I was, so they called me. I remember the, the casting agent, she called me to send her actresses because she was like, we're looking for somebody who can deliver. So mm-hmm. send me actresses. So I sent her a bunch of actresses, you know, mm-hmm. from our database. And I was like, here, the numbers, call them. And, and you then, didn't even send yourself. No, I didn't because I asked my sister. My sister said, so they're not looking for, for you. Don't, don't go. So I was like, okay, fine. <laughs> I mean, if you don't want me, I'm not going to go. So um, then they, um, what happened? The... Um, she called again, like the next week, because they didn't find who they wanted. Mm-hmm. And she was like, "Okay, now you now send me these people, and you come as well." 
Okay. I was like, oh, okay, you want me? Fine, let me come. So then I went and asked my I told my sister I'm going to audition. She was like, well, mm-hmm. yeah, but it's okay. Just I mean, come, but, they're they're not for you, but you know, just go. <laughs> but you know, she, she, she still said it. She was like, oh. you're not the brief. Like the brief mm-hmm. is different, you know. Mm-hmm. And so I went there and I auditioned and I left. Right. Mm-hmm. Then they called me back. I got, I got callbacks, and I think it was six girls. Mm-hmm. And I went there, and first of all, all the girls are young. I think they wanted like 16 year olds or something. Mm-hmm. So me, I was there, my 24 year old self and I, everybody else was like really young. And I was like, ah, this is what my sister meant. So I was like, <laughs> so I was like okay, this you know, to tell you right? the truth. <laughs> so I was like, okay, mm-hmm. these are all babies, you know, these are all like teenagers and like, so I was like, okay, it's fine. It's fine. Let me just, so I just, I, they called me back. So, Hey, well, what do I have to lose? So I auditioned and I left. Right. And then my sister told me she was actually in the room when they were deciding. Mm-hmm. And they were like, this girl, like her eye, her eye contact mm-hmm. is just mm-hmm. You know, she's like so engaging and blah, blah, yeah. blah. So mm-hmm. let's pick her, right? Mm-hmm. So they picked me. And then she came and told me, now after I was told I was picked. And she was like, yeah, she told, then she told them, that's my sister. sister. <laughs> you know, and she's like, and they're like, yeah, we see the <laughs> resemblance. Now that you mention it, we see the resemblance, you know? Mm-hmm. And then they were like, okay. So then I was picked. But then on the day of the shoot, mm-hmm. I was being like, literally like they were burning me with lights. Uh-huh. Like burning so people me, sweating, <laughs> and I was wondering what's going on. Like I, I had never done. Um, I mean, I just I done something small, but I'd never done something like I was really like the lights were so hot. Like they, ha- I kept sweating, and they had they had like two tops for me, and they had to keep changing them, like because you know sweat was showing on the top. Yes, so they had to keep changing them, and I was like, why are they, why are they burning, burning me like me. this? Like I mean, I know this is how you normally lights. Are, yeah, for a shoot, yeah, you need a lot of lights, but these yes. are a lot. So then I find out later that um i went for um now with the the ad show I, the ad aired and they're playing it all the time and everything then i find out later this was i went for a, a voiceover mm-hmm. for um for a, what what was it called for a lightning cream okay i don't remember what, which lightning cream it was but i, I went for a voiceover for a lightning cream mm-hmm. and um we're doing the voiceover and the people doing the recording were like you know this lightning is such an issue. Like, I don't understand why, you know, there were, uh, you know, with girls in Kenya and they were like, the f- this ad we did, um, the Lux ad, the girl, mm-hmm. they didn't know it was me. Oh. This girl, the, it was the first time there was a dark girl on TV mm-hmm. and they actually wanted to pull the ad because she was too dark. Oh no. But you're not that dark. But Listen, still, I'm chocolate and I'm proud of my skin yes. color. I'm, but I'm proud still, of my skin color. it's an African country. Right, but... It, it, they wanted to like pull put the all ad. faces. If if you want a lighter, put all range, all tones, right? That represents but, Africa. But at that time, they never used to put dark girls on TV. It was always light skin because yeah. this is what you know everybody thinks is beautiful. You know, so um, we were really wet. All washed. skin tones are beautiful. Yes. You know, but they really and because the, the, their their argument was they wanted to put um, because uh, it was they were they were. It was for East Af- Eastern Africa, not just yeah. East Africa. So Ethiopia was there. So they wanted mm-hmm. to to appeal to their to, wider to audience, the whole you know, East African. Community. So I was like, so they were telling me the story. They didn't know it was me. So I'm like, uh, guys, you know that was me on the ad. And they were like, oh, sorry, <laughs> this is insider information. We shouldn't have said it. And I'm like, well, so they had to convince. Apparently, they 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 showed the ad because normally what they do is they show the ads to a test audience, and the audience. Um, says they want like they say th- what they like about it right yeah. so they did that with the ad and then because it was it was testing good people liked it yeah. so then they eventually let it go like they let mm-hmm. it air you know and it became popular and they let it air but initially they were like so i'm like okay so then why did you cast me if you didn't want <laughs> yeah <laughs> you didn't like, want a dark skin girl i mean i was that so they possibly thought oh we can change her skin tone or, my, know, or, or know, also but. when they were lighting you up that, exactly <laughs> they were, they were the, trying, you know they were like putting all the <laughs> lights on me that was the Polisana. reason they were like we have to make this girl light skin by force <laughs> hey i'm proud of my skin tone like you know i'm i'm a proud black girl you know like yeah. i'm a proud dark skin girl like mm-hmm. honestly and i think and like i said also about um uh, Lagos. If if I was very insecure in myself, I possibly would we have uh, gone say. there and started to you know use lightning yeah. product, products on myself. They embrace that bleaching things like nonsense. They, do. they don't care about the knuckles. They right? don't care about like in Lagos, skin bleaching is is a whole yeah. booming industry. And it I think the, most most of the creams are made for just West Africans. Yeah. They really love it, which is yeah. sad. Yeah, which is sad because, it's you really know, sad. and I mean, I don't blame them. Like you see a lot of actresses, a lot of Nollywood actresses do it yeah. because um, that's how they get cast. Like I was, I was being told, a friend of mine was telling me how 
she went to an audition and she she was a dark skin girl like me mm -hmm. and she went to an audition and they would literally be pulling light skin girls from the line like mm -hmm. you're there you're a bunch of you and there are some light skin girls on the and they're like mm -hmm. they pull them mm -hmm. like come in audition come in audition so they cut the line because they're light skin so That's they're really literally sad. looking for light skin so mm -hmm. i understand why nollywood actresses do it you know mm -hmm. it's a bit sad that they have to do it yeah. or they feel they, they have, have to, to do, do it. it because maybe they you know i i know dark skin proud dark skin girls that you know still make it genevieve you know yeah. you know Naji is, uh, is is not a light skin girl by all means but and she's made it you know she's made a name for herself mm -hmm. and i it's it's a bit sad that all the new actors coming up feel that they need, need to, do, to it do it to um to get jobs and to get hired but after you see it's, it's such an industry if you see things like that happening you're going to just go ahead and do you're it you're going to think this is the norm i exactly. must do this to yeah. succeed in this so if, if i was if i wasn't as secure in myself i possibly mm. would have i possibly would have bleached my skin you know, yeah. because I would have been like, I want to make it in Nollywood, and to make it in Nollywood, you this is really, what you have to do. Exactly, you really, um, for them to even pay any sort of attention to you, you know, I mean, wow. pulling light skin girls to go and audition mm -hmm. first. What does that? That tell means you? light skin girls are priority, first. right? Yeah. So um, that's the thing. It's it's a bit sad that I, that yeah. the Nollywood industry is going down that road, um, and you know, yeah. But hey, I, I I I made it there, and I I'm dark. You can skin, make so it anywhere. It's possible. <laughs> it's possible, ladies. You don't have to. You don't have to bleach. To no, you it. don't. You don't. You don't. Be proud of who you are. Okay. <laughs> How did you meet your husband? Since you guys now work in the same industry. You know, we have two stories. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's my as story you, and there's his story. As usual, <laughs> there must be two stories. <laughs> my story is I, mm -hmm. I came back from Emirates because I was at Emirates at the time and I took a uh, four-month uh, unpaid leave because I wanted to see how the industry was doing in Kenya. So okay. around 2010, I think, uh, 2010, 2011, I don't remember the exact year. Mm -hmm. So I took uh, unpaid leave and I came back to, you know, to see what they try the industry yeah mm -hmm. and at that time i got cast in makusano junction for the last uh i think it was season 11 and 12 or season 9 and 9 and 10 i think mm -hmm. yeah so then um because they had i had four months off and they're like oh we have we have a character yeah, for you and they were shooting within those four months and i was like <laughs> boom let's do it so then i was working for on makusano as nancy um and then i I sent my CV out to different people and he was one of the people I sent my CV to and he saw it and he was like, okay, come for an interview, you know, just mm -hmm. let's meet. So I went mm -hmm. to their offices and I didn't talk to him. I, I was actually meeting him, but I talked mm -hmm. to his boss because I realized I knew his boss. So I was talking to his boss the whole time. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after he was like, okay, let's meet for coffee. Uh, he gave me his number because, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't give my number out. So he gave me his number and I was like, okay, I'll call you. I didn't call him. I forgot. <laughs> so to <laughs> savage. I know, right? <laughs> So two weeks later, I meet him at a friend's birthday party. And mm -hmm. he's like, so he actually came late and I'd been there like from two o'clock. I think he came about six and I was thinking of leaving. So I'm like, I'm about to leave. And he's like, Liz, we're supposed to meet for coffee. What happened? I'm like, oh, sorry. I forgot to call you. I got busy. Mm -hmm. He's like, no, no, no. Let's plan now. So we plan to meet mm -hmm. for coffee. So then we met for coffee at the National Theater. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he, you know, we talked about karaoke. So then we met again for karaoke. Mm -hmm. And I tried to hook him up with my sister. <laughs> I'm telling you, you're I, really I, savage. I know. So I invited, because I was like, okay, we're going for karaoke, fine. So I invited my sister. Oh, there's this cute white guy, come and meet him. And so I was like, yeah, you know, something might happen to you too. So I invited Were you not into what guys? Or what was happening? I wasn't, in, I wasn't into Alex at that time. For uh -huh. me, it was a professional relationship. Like, this is a guy who might be my director. So I was just like, you know, I don't, um, I, I wasn't thinking of him like that. with Pleasure. Yeah, I wasn't thinking of him like that. I really wasn't thinking of Alex like that. I was just thinking of him as, um, this is a guy who potentially might give me a job. Fine, okay, let's keep in touch. And, oh, okay, you, uh, my sister at that point, you know, liked white guys. So I was like, ooh, let me introduce you to Alex. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think, so I so we went out for karaoke. It was me, Terian, uh, Chebet, and uh, my sister, Susan, and um, Alex, right? Mm -hmm. And I think at that point, he started noticing I was trying to, you know, like, hook them up. <laughs> So I think he he already knew. So he was like, no, 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 I'm interested in you. So he kind of sort of made his intentions sure clear. That. Like, uh -huh. I'm actually interested in you. Yeah. And and I was like, uh, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I was like, oh, let's see what? Okay, fine. So mm -hmm. then I, uh, um, it took a bit of time. But then, yeah, eventually I think I said yes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So and what made what made you say that this might be the guy? You know. And, like long term 
th- having a long term relationship. I think I I went because now after we hang out, now we continued hanging out in uh, Nairobi, and then I went back to Emirates. But then I had like a few days off, mm-hmm. so I went to uh, visit him in Greece because I had a I had a visa, a valid yeah. visa, and I was like, okay, it was like, yeah, come over. He was in Greece at that time, so he's like, come over, mm-hmm. and I went to visit him in Greece, mm-hmm. and I just saw how he was with his family, like he was just so loving, and you know they were just so close, and I was like, oh, okay. Guy's this. cool. <laughs> He's like, okay, like there's there's something there. Let me see. Let me see. At that point, I hadn't like said yes or anything. I was just like, okay, we're just hanging out, out. you know. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I don't know, because also he was planning on leaving Kenya, and I was like, no, me, I'm moving back to Kenya. Kenya. You, you want to leave? Me, I have to come home. So it, this can't work, you know. No. So I was like, I'm, I don't know, but let's, you know, I, yeah. So um. I saw how he was with his family, with his mom, and I was like, "This mm-hmm. is so cool!" Like, I love the you know the relationship between them, and I was like, "I think you're very clever to to <laughs> to go meet the family first, right, and see the scenario there before jumping the broom, and 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 then you you get there and you're like, we are a polygamous family <laughs> or something. You're like, you I, know? Didn't, you're I, like didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't again. <laughs> I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, but yeah, his and his family were just so loving, like, mm-hmm. um, so cool. In fact, his. His dad just passed on like oh, Paul, two days ago. Paul, so, Paul mm-hmm. Yeah, we're just we're just dealing with that and it's like a bit tough. But they just they really welcomed me into their family and it was just with such open arms and it's just yeah. That's so nice. <laughs> so what was Alex's story? Alex met me um way before. Like ah. a few months before while I was still okay. at Emirates and he met me with a friend at karaoke. Mm-hmm. The funny thing is, I don't have any recollection of him. Zero. Like, I, I, I remember the, the meeting mm-hmm. at some club. I think it was Ibiza. Well, at some club mm-hmm. in uh, in town. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think it was Ibiza, I'm not sure, but I think it yeah. was. Next to Next Nation Center. Yeah, I uh-huh. think yeah, uh-huh. I think so. It was yeah, because they used to have karaoke Wednesdays. Yes. I think we just literally say the age <laughs> we did, didn't we? it's fine hey I'm, I'm proud of my age i'm i'm happy i'm, I'm, I'm that old mm-hmm. but like he um I, w- I went to the friend of mine now the friend who had the birthday party from the previous story yeah it was her birthday and uh not on that day but that day she invited me for karaoke because we used to hang out i was in on a layover i was here for 24 hours and i went to the um to for karaoke with her and he was one there were two white guys and he was one of them I remember the other guy. I don't remember him. I still don't remember him. Like, honestly, I mean, I'm sorry, Alex, but I honestly, I don't remember him. Like, I, I'm trying to remember. I remember there were two white guys and I remember um, the other white guy was Justin, who I knew because, you know, he was the son of the guy of Alex's boss. So, okay. I, so I was talking to him because I knew him, mm-hmm. you know, and I was like, <gasps> so I feel really bad. <laughs> Alex. Because the first time he met me, I don't remember. So... And for him, it was maybe it was this magical moment <laughs> in his head, and he's like, "Hey, my wife didn't remember yeah, me. Yeah, you know, who are me? Poor thing. <laughs> oh, poor thing." Then you guys decided, you know what? We are going now officially to Greece. Why that decision? Well, at the time, mm-hmm. we had been trying to do movies, and some things weren't working out. Like, mm-hmm. we were pitching to different. Um, um, companies you know f- with our films and we weren't getting accepted so we're like you know what okay hold on uh let's see we are here paying rent paying this paying that we're like and in greece there's no rent we don't pay rent there so we're uh-huh. like <laughs> i'm we moving to rent. greece i don't we don't pay school fees <laughs> Damn. We don't pay school so everything fees. M- most of so, your bills are sorted yeah uh-huh. we just pay like general bills so we're like you know what this this makes more sense let's go there figure out and we can create well there mm-hmm. we don't have to stop creating mm-hmm. so we moved um just to take a break uh, because things weren't working at the time. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, because sometimes the pressure is like a little... And then we also, we just got, we got... Actually, the big, the main reason mm-hmm. was my son got born. He was like six months at the time we decided to move, about five months. Mm-hmm. Uh, and actually, the moment he was born, we're like, <clears throat> maybe it's better to go to Greece, you know, because it's better to raise a family there. Because yeah. there's literally parks, like that, from two minutes from our house, mm-hmm. there's parks, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a huge park and like a uh, playground. Um, they can play. Uh, I say they now because they're two, but and then, you know, then it was just one. And we're like, this is good for our kids, you know, like, yeah. um, and then also the, the hangout because for his parents, mm-hmm. um, it was their first grandkid. 
oh they're gonna yeah. be obsessed yeah. with the kid <laughs> so they, they, they didn't he, he, they didn't have any other grandkids so we're like <laughs> okay let's you know let's take them there so the kids can um well, my son, because so my son can hang out with his grandparents and yeah. they can get to know each other. So that was actually one of the main reasons. But then the benefits was, wow, we're here, we're not paying rent. <gasps> awesome. <laughs> so we can focus on you this know? important stuff. Yeah, we can focus yeah. on uh, creating and we can focus on, you know, so yeah. Wow. Yeah. What particular thing mm-hmm. or lifestyle was the hardest for you to adapt in Greece? Hmm. What was the hardest thing? The Greek. Mm-hmm. Because um, I'm still learning Greek. Listen, I've been there six years. See, and I'm still not comfortable talking Greek. I understand mm-hmm. a lot more than I did in the beginning. Okay. But the talking, I'm at the point where I just have to throw myself in and talk more. And you know? murder the language yeah. until you... <laughs> yeah, and feel nothing about <laughs> murdering it. Just feel nothing. Like, I just... Kwama, kwama, kwama. I feel nothing, you know? But, just, but I feel... The thing is, the problem mm-hmm. is I feel something. I want to be perfect. So yeah. I don't... It, it, Stops me from speaking, which is like the worst way to learn a language. You need to just be like kids, just to you know, kids just go in and they just go, they say the wrong yeah. thing and they feel nothing. You correct them, they move on. Yeah, they move on. Yeah, that's what I need to be. So yeah. I, I'm not like that yet. So <laughs> it's been six years, and I, my Greek is still really <laughs> horrible. And I've actually done the courses. I did yeah. um, uh, six months mm-hmm. of uh, courses at the university, um, language school, and mm-hmm. still nothing. Can you write? Some words. Listen, I can I can because I do. Mm-hmm. I write on uh, like um, on SMS and stuff. Like sometimes mm-hmm. I write like on Facebook. I post like words in Greek sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like if I'm talking to Greek, Greek people, if I was mm-hmm. responding to them saying thank you, saying uh, you know, then I, I will. Um, the short sentences yes. you just type in Greek. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I I can write. It's actually easier to write and read than it is to speak. To speak. Wow. Yeah. Like uh, the the language, mm-hmm. the letters. I know the letters. They're different mm-hmm. from uh, English letters or Latin letters, but mm-hmm. I know them. Like I can mm-hmm. recognize the different letters. And that one mm-hmm. we learned like pretty quickly. But mm-hmm. it's just the speaking it. Like because the this is the thing with Greek. Like they'll tell you when we're learning, mm-hmm. right? They'll be like, okay, uh, these are the rules. You know how every language has rules, right? Yeah. Like for Swahili, how you speak it is yeah. how you write it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But now, in terms of like, there's the things about things in English I forgot. You know, things like <laughs> nominative, accusative. You're like, I use them because I know them in English. You you know <laughs> the rule and you throw it away and you know them. You know. But yes. now I had to go back and learn mm. what all that stuff is to learn it in Greek. And mm. then also they tell you, okay, these are the rules. Like now, mm-hmm. let's say um, words ending plurals are ending in s, right? So yeah. bags, like a bag, a bag, bags. and then the plural you add s, yes. right? Yes. So that's a rule in English. Mm-hmm. A lot of pl- Plurals, you add S. Yeah. So they have such rules in Greek. Like in, with certain things, this is how you do it. And then they tell you, but then we have exceptions. So there are exceptions to the rule. Mm-hmm. And then they show you a long oh, list of so words <laughs> that don't follow the rule. <laughs> so you're like, so I'm supposed to learn the long list of words? words? Like, are you kidding me? No. So I'm like, uh, and then and, and when our teacher was teaching us, she was telling us, yeah, I know, I know, but you just have to learn the long list of words that don't follow the rule. <laughs> so a lot of times I'm thinking in English and then I'm responding in, in Greek, but then I'm like, then I make a mistake and I'm like, oh, but it's, it's kind of, it's really hard. Wow. So, funny thing though is when I came here, like I was speaking to the security guards in Greek. <laughs> like it's like my brain is confused. Like in Greece, it's confused. But then when I'm here, it's like, ah, oh, it's why Greek is the language. So, okay. <laughs> Like, what's, what's security guys are like like I tell them ne ne and ne is, is yes in English in Greek so I'd be like they tell me something I'm like ne ne I'm like, I just spoke to you in Greek no 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 no, no 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 it's so languages I don't know I think maybe because I'm old maybe <laughs> no but the it's the so guy is like my, my daughter speaks yeah. language very fast because she's young me I can't yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, because we're older let me tell you. <laughs> There's a certain, I think there's a certain age. But well, you know the thing about you can't teach an old dog new tricks. No. I think it's the truth with languages. Which because is, which is upon your brain is just like, I'm saturated with all information. I'm not going to accept any more. It's like, done. I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. Your, your years of languages are done. Your, your years of learning are done. done. Like, I'm just going to remember. In fact, what you know, I'm going to forget. Yes. You know? So you're like, really, brain? Really? <laughs> Being a mom of two, what was your biggest fear having kids? I think in general, living in Greece and just um, like, will they be accepted? Uh-huh. Yeah, I think uh-huh. that for me, that's that was the biggest thing. Um, will they be accepted? Okay. Yeah. And are they being accepted? Yeah. 
I mean, where we live, Thessaloniki is so welcoming. Like, mm-hmm. uh, I, 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 I even wonder why I was worried. Like, mm-hmm. there's, I mean, there's been one or two incidents, but in general, like, of the six years my son has been on this earth, mm-hmm. he's generally been, like, really accepted. Everybody loves him. Like, everybody that meets him is always like, oh, fawning over him, and obviously the young one as well. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think it was an uh, unfounded worry. But I think I still have to prepare them, mm-hmm. you know, that in future, that hopefully the world will change. But in case it doesn't, you know, just to be um, aware, to be aware that some people the... might just uh, treat them different just because of the color of their skin. Yeah. 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 Do you see any similarities between you and your kids? Yeah, they're very stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, That's a bad trait hey, to pick. I know. Like, why <laughs> don't you get the good, good stuff? <laughs> you know? Like, my youngest. Oh, my God. That guy. Like, Leon. He's just... You can't... You can't make him do anything he doesn't want to do. You know? He mm-hmm. will do only what he wants. Like, mm-hmm. so you have to either bembeleza him or if he does it, he's a groom in the beginning. He wanted to do it. Like, uh-huh. you know, you can't, you can't make him do it. If he doesn't want to do something, he won't do it. He won't, he won't like, do it. Yeah, there's no two ways around it. He just won't do it. He's like, they're all the ones you can kind of bembeleza him to do it. Like, you know, like yeah. you just, you tell him, you mm-hmm. give him uh, sweet nothing and he'll do it. Bribe him and then he does. Yeah. <laughs> the younger one, one? nothing. Him, he <laughs> won't. I like think he, he, he will change when he grows up. He'll realize <laughs> ah, being strong-minded is not yeah, good. You've, you've just spoken about uh, working in Emirates. Mm-hmm. What were you doing specifically? And then what made you decide that I'm going to take this transition and I was, go back to acting? I was working as cabin crew. Mm-hmm. Um, I was actually there for four and a half years. And by the time I was leaving, I'd been in first class, working in the first class cabin for two years. Mm-hmm. And I was actually ready to progress to like, you know, a senior position. But I was like, nah, I like working in first class. It's good to handle like two or three people, you know, <laughs> and you're done. <laughs> and then you go back to, to economy mm-hmm. class and help a bit. But, you know, mm-hmm. generally at the end of the day, you're still in first class. Mm-hmm. So I loved working in first class. Um, so I, I didn't want to be, become a senior. Because as a senior, you'd either work in business or economy. So I was like, nah. Mm-hmm. Um, and what made me decide? I... I loved acting. I really mm-hmm. did. I, uh, and I, I wanted to come back to it. Mm-hmm. And um, I was seeing the, you know, because the thing, the industry goes through s- cycles. Like it goes yeah. through cycles of things happening and things not happening, things mm-hmm. happening, things not happening. So I kept seeing all my friends doing stuff and I was like, I want to go back to that. You know, I want to go back to acting. So I left. Um, and then I, I came back to that. Yeah. That's why I left Emirates. Otherwise, I possibly would still be in Emirates now. <laughs> you know? Now that you're back in the country... Mm-hmm. What should we expect from you this year in terms of projects you're doing and other stuff? Well, there's there's a project that we had started many years ago. Uh-huh. And we kind of wrapped it a few, um, like maybe two years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's just about to be released. Um, it's it's finished now. It's, a, okay. it's called Pals of Africa. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, honestly, we started shooting that thing 10 years ago. Like I'm not even joking. Like, we've been shooting throughout the year. We've been mm-hmm. shooting, like, bits and bobs, bits and bobs, like, throughout the years. So, is it a film? Is it a documentary? It's a film. It's a film. It's a film. The um, cast haven't changed in terms have. of size and all yeah. that. <laughs> we, we changed. But it worked with the film, you know. Ah. Weirdly enough, uh, like, the producer was telling me the other day, she was like, people asked her, like, I, how did you age these guys? <laughs> they grew old naturally, you know. Like you shouldn't. No, no. There's no makeup, no nothing. We just, yeah. we just life happened because it was. T- it took so long to shoot. Yeah. Um, and so I think now they are planning to release it soon. She she is planning on doing a, a premiere, um, possibly in Kisumu, because mm-hmm. we shot it in Kisumu in the UK. So she's planning on releasing on doing a premiere um, in Kisumu soon. Hopefully, def- definitely, I think this year is, is the year it's going to happen. Yeah. You know? Especially, she's waiting for the pandemic to end. So hopefully once the pandemic, hopefully this is the last year of the pandemic, you know, like it'll end yeah. in two, three months. We'll be done. Summer, <laughs> no more. No more COVID, please. <laughs> done with COVID-19, you know. Mm-hmm. And then we'll, um, she'll premiere the film. She's actually okay. been waiting to premiere. Just COVID uh, delayed um, everything. Yeah, that. And then uh, also... Um, Any other productions you should Yeah. We actually uh, in... We're shooting a few projects right now. Mm-hmm. Um, there is uh, a few movies for Mnet, mm-hmm. for actually the new channel, Maisha Magic Movies. I think that ah. started last year. Uh-huh. So we're actually working on two projects for that. So nice. you should see them on Maisha Magic uh, movies soon. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to be acting in one of them. Nice. <laughs> to, actually, my, to, to my oppressors, <laughs> we make noise. <laughs> you know? 
we're we're shooting. Uh, we're actually shooting from Sunday, I think. Yeah, we mm-hmm. we start the shoot of that one on Sunday. We just wrapped the first one on Monday. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So I will definitely be sending. Yes. <laughs> wow. I wish you all the best. Thank you. And thank you for coming. Oh, you're welcome. Thank Karibu you so much. Sana. Oh, it was so Do not disappear here. again. <laughs> <laughs> I won't. I won't. Nico, Nico Instagram though. So Instagram, Facebook. You know, uh, anybody definitely. can follow me on that. You know, if they think I've, I've disappeared. Kwanza hey, seba Gina Instagram before we say yes yes yeah. Liz Njaga just L I Z Z N J A G A H is my um, name on Instagram Facebook um, Twitter you know TikTok all of them all social media <laughs> platforms yes follow her thank you guys for watching the episode please subscribe and I will see you guys on the next episode bye.